As a parent, I know how important it is for a growing child to eat well. That's not always easy to do with today's busy lifestyles. Recently, we paid a visit to a school that takes a unique approach to teaching its students about eating good food. At the Ross School in East Hampton, New York, breakfast and lunch are part of the curriculum. This private school is dedicated to integrating education with culture, and that includes serving healthy organic meals. The school cafeteria, with its wooded views and earthy colors, is reminiscent of an Alpine Inn. Founded in 1991 by Courtney Ross, widow of Time Warner founder and CEO Steve Ross, the school has been purposely designed to nurture body, mind, and spirit. On the day that we visited, the lunch line included choices like mushu with cabbage and vegetables, lettuce with carrots and dressing, pizza, roasted turnips, apples and onions, and pasta with duck. It's interesting that so many cultures came up with a similar type of food. Executive chef Ann Cooper, now in her fifth in year at the Ross School, has recreated the ABCs of traditional home economics into an acronym for the school's name, R-O-S-S stands for Regional, Organic, Seasonal, and Sustainable. When I was hired here, Mrs. Ross, the founder of the school, sat down with me and said, I eat organically and healthfully, and that's what I want for the students. She just sort of gave me that ball, and I created a team who created the program here. After graduating from the Culinary Institute of America, Anne spent 15 years as a celebrated executive chef at white tablecloth establishments. You guys are doing a great job here. This is She's also fabulous. written several books on the politics of food. One of the things about being a chef is that everything you make is gone. You make it and somebody eats it, but it's not anything lasting. And I thought, you know, I really could make a difference. Maybe I, maybe I could really change the way America feeds its kids. These healthy meals are part of a larger wellness program, which is housed along with the cafeteria in Zen-inspired center for well-being. The Ross School's 250 students in grades 5 through 12 practice yoga, tai chi, and meditation, in addition to team sports. Anne and her staff take a particularly mindful approach to meal planning. The R in the acronym Ross stands for regional. Very good. That is fabulous. Yeah. It's really important to me that we serve regional food, and the reason is we have to keep farmers farming. The adage, no farms, no food, is really true. Where's our food going to come from? I'm going to be a chef cooking plastic peanut butter from Taiwan if we don't have food grown locally. <laughs> Despite the long winters on the South Fork of Long Island, the school cafeteria is supplied with a surprising wealth of vegetables grown and stored by local farmers. Oh, these are beautiful. Yeah, I bet they're going to be really sweet. Huh? Very sweet. They get sweeter this yeah. time of year. Nearly all of the ingredients used in the kitchen comply with the USDA's strict new national organic certification standards. The O in the acronym ROS stands for organic. We're all antibiotic and hormone free in the meats, seafood and poultry that we feed the children. And we're all organic or natural in dairy products, no RGBH, no hormones at all. Scott Chasky delivers garlic, cabbage, potatoes and fresh greens from his hoop houses. I have a 13-year-old daughter who's here, and my son graduated from here. Part of what the school does, of course, is integrate the kids into uh, the whole food production system out here. So we've had kids from this school come to the farm every year to help us plant, to harvest, to learn in depth about how food is grown and about sustainable agriculture. When children or adults eat our food, they say, oh, it's delicious, you must be the best chef. Well, it's not because I'm a good chef or a good cook. It's that the food is good food, and it's fresh food, and it's seasonal food, and it tastes the best when it's in its season. But we stretch this a little bit because we're here in the winter. We buy a lot of food from May till November, and we process it, and we dry it, and we freeze it, and we make tomatoes into sauce, and actually serve that from January till June so that we always do have seasonal food. Students, faculty, and staff dine together eating off china plates and drinking from real glassware. All the food waste is recycled into bins which are taken to Scott's farm to add to his horse manure compost. The kids are not just hearing about it or reading about it, they're actually in touch with it in an in-depth way. Menus are planned not only around nutritional guidelines, but also with special consideration to a global idea of well-being. And the last is sustainable. It has to support and nurture us, the planet, farmers and farm workers, restaurants and restaurant workers, so we have 
food for our children and their children and their children after that. One requirement for graduation is that a student must prepare and cook a healthy meal. We're teaching dining along with everything else because that's something that's been lost. Eighty-five percent of American children don't sit down for a meal on a regular basis at a table with a family. So we've become that family and that makes for students who are really happy and are doing well in school. This is one of the main uh, bits of my schedule that I look forward to every day. It's like, oh, lunch is coming up, the, the phenomenal pizza, or whatever they have, it's just almost always amazing. Becoming aware that you are what you eat can be challenging, but the Ross program makes it easier by offering students a wide selection of healthy choices each and every day. I like to get a little something from every food group, like a balanced lunch. I've tried a lot of food from different countries, like um, Asian foods and Japanese foods and Thai foods, and they've all been really good. It gives you a good environment to learn, too. It's not, I, I really like the food. We've done a pilot study, and our students eat 100% more fruits and vegetables than the national average and our local control group. And says the cost of buying food and beverages for breakfast, lunch, and snacks for each student averages under $4 a day, a price that makes this pilot program a model that even some public schools are now considering. We are a laboratory. We've been able to think up all the possibilities of things we can do. What if it was a perfect world? What would we feed children and how would we do it? And now we're taking that and being able to showcase it in a way that public schools from all over America, anywhere, can come in and pull out pieces of it. Whether it's just deciding you're going to serve children organic milk. We have thousands of recipes we've developed. We're starting to share them with other schools. They may not have the dining room like this. They probably wouldn't. We're not replicable in total, but that was never the idea. But the soul and our ideas are replicable anywhere across America.